If you want to watch one video before you enter 2022 as a web developer, then this is the video you should be watching. Hey everyone, in this one, we'll be discussing about everything you need to go from zero to 100 in web development field for 2022. And I'm gonna divide this video in some interesting sections so that you can jump around and according to your expertise, watch the part which is most relevant. But if you're watching this for fun or to know everything, just go ahead and take a step back, take a seat and grab something to eat or drink because this is gonna be a long one. Let's go. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. Okay, let's start with why you have to be a web developer because that is something I believe is super important to know before you actually get into the field. Now, web development is one of the fields which at this point is most rewarding and is most exciting to work as well, given that you know the right things to learn and right things to do. Why? Because web development unlocks opportunities, whether that's internships, jobs, whether that's building something on your own. It has got a lot of revenue coming in right now. A lot of web dev companies like Versal are raising a lot of money from investors. That means they are creating a lot more opportunities for all of us as developers because those are the people they are hiring. And there's a massive progress going on in the whole web development ecosystem, whether that's on front end led by React, Vue, Svelte, all these frameworks, whether that's on back end and databases with serverless architectures and things like Planet Scale DB or you know, these Cloudflare workers and Cloudflare storage and so on. It's almost like there's a boom in technology, demand, supply, everything. And if you can capture and if you can understand what's going on in this space, it would be a great investment in yourself. Now that we know why web development is so exciting and the front end, back end, full stack parts are growing at a massive rate, let's understand how you can utilize the next year to become a web developer, to get employed or build that startup, build that product, whatever your goal is in this video. All right, I'm gonna start off this video a little bit different. We're not gonna just start discussing the tech stacks in this one because we have done enough videos on that. I'm gonna try and divide this video into a few sections. This first section over here would be something like bare minimum developer. So what is a bare minimum developer? This kind of developer is a person who knows no crap outside of the bare minimum technologies required to build something. There are pretty much infinite choices out there. And if you look at hundreds of videos on YouTube, you're gonna find learn Rust or learn React Router or learn, you know, Redux and stuff like this. But you don't need that. You don't need any of that. And I also recommend a lot of things. You also don't need those things. So this section would cover what is the minimum distilled value the still content you need so let's start with front end the bare minimum stuff over here that you need is obviously html first html and html5 you're gonna need css and you're gonna need javascript which is es6 plus syntax no more wars no more callbacks were not necessary. Try to use promises, try to use async await, try to use modern JavaScript syntax, try to use declarative methods, not imperative loops, wherever possible. And surprisingly for the front end stack, this is pretty much it for the bare minimum developer, right? You don't need to learn React, you don't need to learn Angular, Vue, Svelte, any of that things, Webpack, nothing, pretty much whatever you can technically build today with any of these frameworks you can build with these three things alone that's more than enough let's cover a bit of back end now in the bare minimum section so i'm going to say a programming language over here and i'm going to not write programming language i'm going to write what the actual thing i would recommend but you can replace this with any programming language right this could be rust this could be python this could be anything but this is the recommended one because you have already learned javascript over here so it makes sense that you carry on those learnings because remember we are talking about the bare minimum developer you need to learn about apis in order to understand how to build something and create something because most of your data exchange with the front end with the javascript world over here would be through apis so in apis section you should be familiar with rest architecture what are some of the common methods, get, post, put, patch, status codes, all that stuff. And you should be, till a certain extent, aware about HTTP protocol as well. Why? Because when I say this, I mean you understand the headers concept in a request, in an API request, how cookies are transferred, how, uh, you know, additional JWT tokens might be transferred. Again, I'm putting this in bare minimum because once you have this knowledge, you can build a complete application, whether that's for authentication, whether that's for 
some authorization roles or something without any additional framework or anything, not even express. You just need bare minimum Node.js understanding to understand how all of that would work. Then finally, the MISC section, which would also include database and everything, this would involve something like, I would say, learning about a database, whether that's using MongoDB Atlas for no, no SQL or something like Planet Scale, which can allow you to build SQL applications. And again, both of them are managed database services. So it's not like you have to start a server, you have to do something. You just have to go ahead, create an account, get a free server where your database is hosted. This is NoSQL, this one is SQL. And again, a bare minimum thing you need to host your front end in the miscellaneous section is Vercel or Netlify or you know something similar, which is Cloudflare Pages is also one interesting thing. So this is your bare minimum web developer 2022 tech stack. Nothing has been changed really from last year. If you would have asked me the same question, I think the only thing which would have been different is in this case, Planet scale wasn't there or you know it was but still in beta so the SQL part I would have suggested you something like Superbase but personally I don't like that particular service because you abstract away the backend in that case I mean at least that's what is pitched as so you do want a backend layer somewhere in between for the logic and all that stuff you don't want to expose your database directly on the front end nobody does that mostly you know you would never find an enterprise or any company doing direct SQL calls from front end, it's, it just doesn't make sense. But anyway, this is the bare minimum developer tech stack of 2022. All right, let's get to the second section, which would be strong developer section. And this is the place where we will start putting in the real stuff, the real things which are relevant, which are much more happening and much more making much more progress. This was more of a foundational fundamental part because you need these technologies, you need these services to host and you need this information. But the strong developer part is something which is much more vibrant right now and is much relevant and increases your performance and developer experience and so on. All right, let's again start with the front end part. And this is the part where I would want to introduce something like a Tailwind framework, which will allow you to prototype designs and build websites with consistent layout even faster, even quicker. At this point, I would automatically recommend Next.js, which automatically means React already. Again, this is my recommendation. You can swap this with SwellKit or Vue or anything, and, and the server side equivalent of that particular thing. At this point, I would recommend getting very strong with Dev Tools that is Chrome Dev Tools in, in my recommendation so that you are able to debug and understand what you are doing on the front end. Let's get to back end now. If I remember anything in front end, we're going to add more details to there. In the back end section, we're going to add the first thing we're going to add is the Linux part because very soon in the next stage of your development cycle, you would not only be just working with these easy providers, Vercel and Netlify, you would also be deploying stuff on Linux servers. So having understanding of Linux and bash and general commands and browsing the file system there is super important. Similarly, networking over there, again, kind of comes into Linux services only, but that's also something you should be paying very close attention to. Caching is also a super important part to understand with something like a Redis, that is also important. And finally, web security is also one of the most important things you should know as a developer so that things like log4j does not happen in your code. In the MISC section of this, I would say a lot of tooling goes over here, which we did not include in the both the front end and back end sections. Understanding npm, yarn, their log files, their scripts, how packages work, how the node ecosystem works in general is very very important understanding git is super important as well here you should also worry a little bit about linters prettiers webpack and so on other tools and all their configurations so you should be familiar and you should be easy to work with all of this stuff and of course you should be very very comfortable with hosting your code and using git and github together this this is kind of like linked but in a way you should be comfortable using github and branches and all that stuff which git gives you and finally we have the category of rockstar developer and in this area things get really serious and you are trying to aim for the for the rockstar title to yourself. The first thing I'm going to use over here, mention over here is the use of profiling, profiling your code in the way 
of performance based things for example if you are using a framework like react you should be able to understand what are the performance trade-offs you are doing for certain things right so for example learning about profiling and performance basically both of them together learning about memoization techniques and how to speed up your builds and how to minimize the javascript and whatever you are doing so that part is super important and let me just mention front end over here you should also take a look into wasm wasm is a very interesting compiling target which allows you to write code in rust lang and C++ and all that stuff and compile it to something which can be used on front end. So technically there is not a lot of stuff which you can do in Wasm but cannot do in JavaScript. But a lot of performance comes from Wasm because it's running on native speed, near native speed if not native. Moving our code base to TypeScript is also one of the best things you would do to yourself once you are into this area because once you go to TypeScript there is no coming back. And finally, which is probably the most important part is staying up to date with whatever is happening now this is important why because i'm not telling you a lot about micro front ends for example because not a lot of people right now are using view inside react or swelt inside react or some other framework i'm not telling you about web components because they still are not as hot as everyone predicted that they might become but staying up to date with these trends is important because i don't want to mention them right away because these are not relevant right now but they might be very relevant in six months down the line so how do you stay relevant well you follow us on twitter code dams account me thousand other people who post out content when something interesting happens but staying up to date is one of the most important things i think in the front end land right now because there's like i said a lot of innovation and a lot of progress is being made let's talk about back end and at this point i would recommend something like a cloud based system instead of relying on cell you know just saas providers like vercel or anything or you know even heroku for example so a cloud based system is something like aws or google cloud provider or even digital ocean that is also fine but you have to start somewhere you have to get started with these cloud providers where you are launching compute machines where you are exploring their services like s3 for example ec2 you know you are sending emails programmatically with ses instead of using mailchimp or some sort of apis which is super expensive compared to ses following with the cloud you have to explore these serverless and manage services as well by these clouds because cloud does not mean that you pretty much have to do everything by yourself it means that you for the most difficult problems like storage and compute you rely on already built services s3 for serverless like i mentioned compute is this in case of managed compute this would be kind of like lambda working and exploring lambda cloud watch how to trigger lambdas on a cron job for example or how to trigger lambdas on a certain event so understanding about the serverless compute environment on the cloud is super important then again typescript is super relevant here as well goes without saying and staying up to date again is also very relevant in the backend section as well in the miscellaneous section super important to understand about ci cd tools and how to work with them especially my recommendation is github actions because it lives pretty much close to your source code if you're hosting on github and it gives you a sense of how to build and test a lot of stuff just on the continuous integration servers similarly learning about testing is super critical whether that's front end with cypress whether that's back end with unit and integration tests and so on so testing your code base code coverage and having test suites that link to your ci cd build pipelines building those pipelines is super important as well having a clarity on production and staging environments and you know understanding about a lot of things like redundancy and regional failovers and all that good stuff when you are managing your own cloud infrastructure is also something you should prioritize in the miscellaneous part and although we have already mentioned web security but that is more on the code level this security over here is is more like an end to end security where you know and i'm so sorry for my handwriting going all haywire absolutely cannot write in this direction but you understand this security concept is basically saying end to end security management whether that is of credentials whether that is of you know security address security in transit encryption address and en encryption in transit how to store environment variables properly how to give access to people if you are using aws learning a bit about iam which is your identity access management system and having a production ready environment so yep this is my 
web development roadmap for 2022 for you guys if you follow this this would pretty much be more than enough to get you from zero from html and css which is the starting point to 100 managing securities and you know aws infrastructure and everything end to end so this is like a complete roadmap picture obviously there are a lot of places you can learn more technologies or learn more packages and learn more about those kind of things but in a nutshell this is all you need this is the you know bird's eye view of everything you need to become a solid full stack web developer in 2022 so that is all for this video if you liked it send it to two of your friends make sure you comment down what you think about this if you have any suggestions if you have any more technologies to add that is all for this one i'm gonna see you in the next one really soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this video till the end also if you're not part of codedamps discord community you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching